Jade with Spry Training. Today I'm here to discuss with you the politics of sports science. Using the knowledge I have acquired through doing um, politics at degree level, international relations, this is my background, my other passion so to speak, I had a very good understanding of the political spectrum. The political spectrum had all the political ideologies, all the major political ideologies. The political spectrum on the left wing, you'd start off with far left stuff like communism and you'd come in further to the right going into socialism, coming over to liberalism and then going to neoconservatism, going to conservatism, then going across into far right stuff which is fascism you know, all that kind of far right extreme stuff. Um, having acquired that knowledge I, I then decided to utilize this and apply it to um, sports science and if you look on the left hand spectrum of the sports science graph I have now devised which I now call the fitness spectrum on the left you have aerobic activity which is totally oxidative in energy pathways and um, it, it used to, people who tend to be on this left of the spectrum tend to have um, a lot of type 1 muscle fibers very slow twitch um, they tend to be smaller in body um, on this left hand side of the spectrum as well they tend to be uh, very enduring um, patterns they also tend to it's always all about muscular endurance it tends to be as you can see marathon runners coming through to cyclists and swimmers on this side and then we come to center ground liberalism center ground we have 1500 meter runners they utilize two energy pathways they utilize creatine phosphate which takes you from probably about 10 seconds up to three minutes and they, this energy pathway they also use ATP as well and because um, they, they go for you know a, a very respectable period of time at a very intense pace so their lactate threshold their VO2 max is also um, quite at a very good level so coming to the right of the spectrum I've got bodybuilder but probably even more explosive than a bodybuilder is a power lifter and even a strong man and, and on the right of this side we have people who are more type 2 dominated they're very explosive the energy pathways used here is ATP and ATP is normally it's 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 basically using the the glucose that's stored within the muscle for a very short period of time the sprinters are on this side so if we talk about um, sprinters for example or, or runners let's just talk track for a minute to understand if you look at a hundred meter sprinter um, a hundred meter sprint like Tyson Gay for example from for the US he's very explosive and very muscular and very aesthetically pleasing so to speak if you compare him to someone like say Seb Coe a 1500 meter runner for the UK he is very um endurance in terms of type 1 very slow twitch fibers and he is um in comparison to, to, to muscle size if you go from say Tyson Gay you come down to 200 to 400 to 800 if you go down the row that way you will notice that there's a reduction in muscular size because of the amount of cardiovascular is demanded for in their training um, regimes you may ask where's the where's the, the boxers on this spectrum the boxers on this spectrum is very difficult to place them because they can train in an aerobic fashion and perform in the in, in the ring for that two two minutes in a very explosive nature so I look at someone like comparing Muhammad Ali and uh, Mike Tyson two good boxers Muhammad Ali was always constantly going on his feet he's more he's more oxidated if you see him he, he, he's not as big as Mike Tyson and explosive but they're two very good boxers but they trained in different ways which is what um, sort of caused their body that um, composition to look the way it does not to say that blood type or, or your um, somatotype um, and your metabolic rate doesn't affect your body composition but this in my opinion is uh, the, the training which comes into it is is very much so part and parcel of the matter also now looking into the, um, the anaerobic big side of stuff I've got bodybuilder I've got a uh, weightlifter over here they tend to have acquired a lot of type 2 muscle fibers which is very explosive this causes them to um, 
to be able to perform for a very short period of time in a functional sense and um, they can't possibly well they, they could go and do a marathon but they would find it very challenging however in between this all I would give kudos to military personnel serious military units such as the Royal Marines the US Marines Rangers the SAS any special forces unit or infantry units who are able to go and perform anaerobically and perform aerobically a marine could scale a rope within 10 seconds um, this is all uh, explosive energy or he could go and do a 30 mile tab up up and down Dartmouth um, this is totally two different types of, of, of requirements in terms of the fitness spectrum but they have developed a muscle type 2C if you look this muscle is, 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 is almost in the middle of the two and their mindset allows them to acquire this muscle because this muscle they, they don't necessarily have the most rest when they're on on exercises or whether, whether they're on operations they don't have a lot of rest they don't have very good nutrition but they still are able to perform however I would go to as far as saying in a soldier's off season the period of time when they're in camp they can gain more muscle mass because they're probably not being demanded so much in terms of um, performance um, they might have a, a mile and a half run now and again or they might do various low level training um, during camp but then the most most important part of this they are able to go into the to the cookhouse and then replenish themselves with all this nutrition lost in the training therefore in camp they can maintain a muscular physique well a more muscular physique than rather when they're um, out on ops on the ground and they, they they lose this because of the lack of nutrition and rest but I'd advise you to utilize this, this this fitness spectrum in order to design a program which is ideal for yourself. You know, look into the energy systems, look into the muscle you're trying to, to, to acquire. If you want to get big and jacked, you know, this kind of stuff, which um, is what is aesthetically pleasing and females like this stuff and, you know, all this kind of stuff, you, you probably want to look into becoming purely explosive and shying away from too much aerobic cardio. So if you're going to do cardio, do anaerobic cardio which is short bursts or you could look into doing a lot more walking which is low intensity how bodybuilders prepare for, for, for going on stage it, it burns a lot of fat um, and it's not so taxing on on the muscles so there you have it I hope this helps you in order to understand fitness a lot more um, and looking at it from a, a total theory point point of view I'm more practical but sometimes we have to get theory in order to have a, a good guide for when we get out there and start smashing it all over the place.